peace each other. Megan and Sean, here we are this morning. You've planned for this for a long, long time. Sean, you just barely got into Bend, and here we are, ready to have the ceremony. And I bet you both stand here with mixed emotions this morning. Relief. The end of all the preparations, Megan. Also, anticipation. You've dreamt about this day, and anticipation is you discover each other. And a certain amount of fear, a fear of the unknown. This is a life-changing decision. You've chosen a road with no U-turns. The ceremony that we're in right now will soon be over, but the marriage is a lifetime. So I'd like to challenge you to know and keep your God-given roles and responsibilities. For you, Sean, as husband, God has asked you to be a servant leader, to lead like Christ. That means unselfish love, sacrificial love. That means putting Megan before yourself. To treat her as a sister in Christ and to value her as Jesus did when he purchased her with his own blood. And Megan, your responsibility is to encourage him as he seeks to follow Jesus Christ and to lead your family in your home. Megan, God has called you to be a helper and an encourager. Your responsibility is to submit to him as you would to Christ, to serve as you would Christ. And Sean, for her to be that, you need to continue to treat her with honor, to encourage her, and to support Megan. Sean and Megan, today you're setting out on an exciting journey and there will be difficult times. But with the grace of God, these difficult times can make your relationship stronger. I think of tempered glass that's been under heat, that it's stronger. I think of the trees at the coast that have faced the winds, and they're stronger. Today you will leave family and friends, literally, be separated by at least a thousand miles. And we don't know what the future holds, but wherever Uncle Sam sends you, Sean, You and Megan, I encourage you to make new friends, to remain best friends, to become part of a local church family, the family of God, and then to pursue an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. As you move toward him, you will find yourselves being drawn to each other. Let's pray. Father, it's so good this morning to stand here and in the presence of Christ and these witnesses see this couple make these vows to each other and to you. And Lord, they'll need your grace. And we're so glad that you're a God that uh, abounds in grace, that you delight in sharing grace, that you never tire of expressing your love for us and to us. And so, Lord, we commend them to you, not knowing what the future holds, but trusting you who hold their future. May your blessing be upon them, their marriage, their home. In Jesus' name, amen. Sean, would you repeat after me? I, Sean, take you, Megan. I, Sean, take you, Megan. To be my beloved wife. To be my beloved wife. I promise to cherish you. I promise to cherish you. With an unselfish love. With an unselfish love. Even as Christ loved his church. Even as Christ loved his church. I promise to remain faithful. I promise to remain faithful. Through times of prosperity. Through times of prosperity. And in times of adversity. And in times of adversity. Through times of abounding joy and utter despair. Through times of abounding joy and utter despair. Through times of sickness and times of health. Through times of sickness and through times of health. I promise to seek God's will. I promise to seek God's will. And his purpose for our life together. And his purpose for our life together. I promise to yield to you my heart. I promise to yield to you my heart. In order that our work for God. In order that our work for God. May be with our whole heart. May be with our whole heart. Our whole mind. Our whole mind. And our whole being. Whole being. All this I promise you because I love you, Megan. All this I promise you because I love you, Megan. With a godly love. With a godly love. An abiding love. And an all-consuming love. And an all-consuming love. Even as Christ so loved you and so loved me. Even as Christ so loved you and so loved me. 
And Megan, would you repeat your vows to Sean? I, Megan, take you, Sean, I, Megan, take you, Sean before God and these witnesses to be my beloved husband. I promise to cherish you with an unselfish love, even as Christ unselfishly gave himself for me. I promise to be your helpmeet, your sweetheart, your companion, and your co-laborer in Christ. I promise to honor you as the head of our home, even as Christ is the head of his church. I promise to cling to you in loyal devotion through times of prosperity and through times of, po- times of poverty. I promise to cling to you in times of strength and in times of weakness. I promise to cling to you in times of helplessness and happiness. Whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Whether thou goest, I will go. And thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God. All this I promise you, Sean, because I love you with a godly love, an abiding love, and an all-consuming love, even as Christ so loved you and so loved me. We are gathered as a congregation this morning, and the first public act that Sean and Megan wanted to participate in is to invite you to join them around the Lord's table. We call it the Lord's table because it's in his name. He's here present. We do it under his authority. Just as this ordinance, uh, Jesus left this ordinance with his followers to be observed wherever his followers gather in his name. And today we gather in the name of Jesus, under his authority, to celebrate the union of Sean and Megan. The Apostle Paul illustrated the love, illustrated the love that a man should have for his wife by pointing to the love that Christ has for you and me. One of God's purposes for marriage is to establish a small church where parents model and pass along their faith to the next generation. So today... As a congregation, we gather to remember Jesus' death and to, participate, and to anticipate his return. In a few moments, the ushers will come and bring you the cup and the bread. If you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose faith is planted firmly in the finished work of Jesus Christ, we invite you to join us and participate. When you've been served, we ask that you please wait, and we'll eat and we'll drink together. Would the ushers please come?